All right, back here on Yahoo as we get ready for UFC 121. I, I don't want to steal Spike's deal, but it is kind of Brocktober on Yahoo as well. And anytime Brock Lesnar fights Kevin, uh, it's a big deal. But how big a deal is this one going to be? It's, it's, it's an interesting time right now to hold a pay-per-view in the world of fighting with the football season and uh, trying to sell this fight without a foil on the other side and Cain Velasquez. So. Steve, I, I just think you, know, you take a Brock Lesnar fight and you say – any Brock Lesnar fight, you start with a base of basically eight hundred thousand. I really believe that. You know, he's he has been such a big star, and he's come into the UFC. Look at his first fight against Frank Mir. Uh, he wasn't even the main event on that card, but it was a huge selling pay per view, and it's gone up ever since. Um, I think that you know Brock is one of those guys that people are going to find a way to buy his fight. Um, and so I, I believe that on Saturday night, despite college football, despite the World Series, despite all the talk about the NFL and the domination that the NFL has in the U.S. market, I believe Brock Lesnar is going to get his million pay-per-view sales. I believe it's going to be a huge card. they got a lot of sellers on this particular card. It's a better matchup card-wise. Um, I think it's going to be a big pay-per-view. I don't think it's going to be UFC 100 big, but I do think it's going to be a big pay-per-view. So m most of his recent fights have been in excess of a million pay-per-view buys, we think. You know, UFC doesn't release the numbers. Um, can this one crack a million? And if, if it doesn't, what do you think? I, you know, I'm not going to say, well, what's the problem? Because they're still making amazing money, and those, that's a good buy rate. But in my mind, Brock is a, a big enough star and, you know, the heavyweight thing that it, it should be pretty established over a million pay-per-view buys now. Well, I guess I would say this. If George St. Pierre were headlining a card – against, you know, a, a solid contender, but maybe not the biggest selling contender. And then, you know, what would that card do? What would the pay-per-view on that card be just with George selling a card? Look at what that would do and what the difference of a Brock Lesnar card would do, and that would show you how big Brock is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, George is, you know, Dana, I think, says George may be our biggest star, except for Brock. Right. Um, you know, there's nobody in the business, and I mean nobody, that approaches Brock in terms of pay-per-view sales. Uh, whether I think there's a lot of people that like him because uh, of the type of fighter he is. There's a lot of people that want to see him lose. You know, you got the whole wrestling fan base coming in. There's a lot of different constituencies that make up Brock's audience. But the, at the end of the day, Brock's audience is bigger than everybody else. I definitely think it does over a million. Not even a, you know, a shadow of a doubt in my mind that it'll do that. I think it'll be low million. But I, let's put it in perspective. I've covered the fight game for many, many years. Um, and in boxing, you know, pay-per-view came around 91 was really when we started seeing uh, pay-per-view. And even today in boxing... With the exception of the absolute biggest fights, you know, Aram's not going to be very happy if Pacquiao and Margarito on November 13th does 250000 But if you told most promoters, hey, I'll give you a pay-per-view of 250000 they would take it without putting the fight on. They would just say, thank you very much. There's only a handful of fights that, you know, that, that in boxing that would exceed that. Now, I don't say that to knock boxing. I say that to point out that 250,000 pay-per-view sales is a lot of sales. It's a lot of money. It's shown a lot of interest in it. And when you get up into that million range, you know, anything in that number is just astronomical. In boxing history, in boxing history, there's only been about 25 fights that have ever done over a million. Uh, and UFC's had, you know, what, I think six, five or six, maybe seven, you know, in that, and that range mm -hmm. and the UFCs that have gone over a million all but I think one and I, and I don't have any numbers in front of me but it's a, it's a high percentage have involved Brock Lesnar I know Chuck and Tito Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz uh, were the first to break a million in the UFC but but beyond that uh, you know Brock has been involved in most of them I guess my argument would be is that I think USC has a better product so I'm, I'm bullish on on USC and MMA I think you get more value on the card um, I just think that the one thing missing, and this is coming from a guy who, you know, and, you know, you cover boxing, you cover MMA, I do that, I do a regular sports radio show. I think that the one thing that's missing is still that, that sizzle for this fight card where I think Brock should be even higher than this. I think he's, he's got such a good personality, but, boy, it's tough to tell him, hey, you know, be mean, old, you know, angry Brock, but he's, he's kind of suppressing it a little bit. And we saw a little bit of it at the start of the week, but I... To me, that's that final hook that pushes this thing like another 200,000 buys, and I kind of wonder at the end of the week if it's going to come out or not. 
I, I don't know that there's that big constituency for Kane, and that's the problem that, you know, sometimes I think Carwin did a good job before his fight with Brock of building up a fan base and people, you know, I think a lot of people like Carwin, you know, he was very big in the social networking, um, you know, had, had been very accessible to the public, and so I think a lot of people out there, you know, they wanted to see, okay, Brock's going to get his come up, and so there was a large number of people out there. I don't think, you know, Kane's been a low-key guy, he's never, you know, I remember at UFC 99 I wrote this guy is going to be the heavyweight champion someday mark it down I'm not saying in this next fight I'm not saying in the next year but he is going to be the heavyweight champion and I just got ripped to shreds right you know and there was just no you know because I don't think people really you know cared that much about Kane and didn't pay attention to him and I don't think he's generated a lot of passion among people even since you know his win over Noguera it was one of the worst pay performing pay-per-view cards UFC had in 2010 um you know, I don't think that he's generated that passion. So Brock doesn't have the foil on the other side. But I think this week, if he goes out and he acts like Brock, which I'm sure he will do, uh, you know, I think you know he's going to be barking and snarling. I will be standing right next to him at the uh, at the uh, workouts, and uh, you know, so I'll I'll feel the wrath of that sometimes. But well, yeah, I think the other interesting element on the card is Tito Ortiz. He's buried a little bit in terms of the fights and against Matt Hamill. And, hey, this could be the last hurrah. But I do think USC uh, will use him and is wise to use him as one of the promotional tools, whether it's doing interviews the last couple of days. Because, you know what? I mean, you talked to him. I read some great interviews. I mean, he, Tito is he is dynamite, man. He, he really sells himself. Tito, you know, knows how to sell a yeah. fight. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And, and Tito's a star. Tito's a guy that, you know, people, you know, to be a star doesn't mean you're beloved. To be a star means that people want to watch you. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt that people want to see Tito. Again, the same as Brock. You know, there's some people that want to see Tito win. There's some people that want to see him lose and get dumped on his head. Um, you know, I, I think it's winning a little bit from his peak when he fought Chuck the second time. But, you know, I think part of that, though, is because he's been injured a lot and he hasn't been the same fighter. Now... You know, I know you read uh, the USA Today article on Tito. I spoke to Tito at length, and I'll have a story on Yahoo Sports uh, coming up this week on him. But, you know, Tito said a lot of interesting things. But he, the one thing he said is, I am healthy, and I'm going to fight for the first time healthy. No excuses at all. Um, and I reminded him that he said the same thing before the last fight against Forrest Griffin, but he said, you know, I couldn't say last time that I had a bad neck. I'm telling you unequivocally. So now, you know, if Tito can come out and fight like the Tito of old and be a big factor in that division, I think, you know, he's still going to be right there. Um, I just think some people maybe have lost faith in his ability to compete at the highest level, that thinking that, you know, guys like, you know, John Jones, you know, et al. have kind of come up and, and passed him pass him by. But I think if Tito shows against Matt the Hammer Hamill that he is the old Tito Ortiz, I, I, I think, you know, T Tito is a big draw. And I, Tito's going to push buttons. He's going to get into it with Dana. He's going to take some shots at Chuck. Uh, we know that's coming and uh, all, all along. Uh, it, you know, it's going to happen. So Tito, Tito, I think Tito being on the card makes it all that much better. And, and, and then lastly, Steve, let me say this. Jake Shields, mm -hmm. I think, adds a little bit. I don't think he's going to add a huge amount, but Jake Shields is coming off a victory on national television that was viewed by a lot of people. He beat a guy that virtually everybody, including I think you and I, said was going to squash him, and now he's in the UFC. I think people are going to want to see how he does. So I think that as a third fight down... That, you know, that really helps. I know it's not built as the third fight, but I think, you know, in terms of notoriety, certainly Jake isn't, you know, Tito Ortiz. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that uh, there's a lot of elements that help this card. I, I agree with you. I think it's a dynamite card. I just hope that, uh, you know, it all comes together and they can do gigantic numbers. It's it's good for MMA, and the card does have, you know, the two polarizing guys. And like you said, it, it really has a good fight fans fight. So we'll see. We'll see how it does. We'll have updates with you from down in Anaheim and full coverage, and we'll do picks later in the week. Thanks, Kevin. You got it, Steve. Thank you.